two. All right, episode 96 of Serralo Sports Talk. It's the Super Bowl recap episode back from a week in Arizona. And who else would I be recapping Super Bowl 58 with? Aside from my man, former all-pro linebacker, Lofa Tatupa. What's up, baby? Hey, man. How you doing, brother? Doing great. Catching up on uh, some much-needed sleep. You know, I mean, you, sure. you've done a Super Bowl. You were there in Miami. You, you know that we don't really get much rest out there. Miami was wild. How was Arizona? Arizona was a good time. It was it was a good time. I was, you know, getting in at 2.30 in the morning and waking up at 6.30. It was a uh, yeah. good, good time sounds, to be 24, you know? Sounds about right. Yeah, you're you're young. You can uh, bounce back real quick. But, you know, most importantly, when are you coming back to a Super Bowl? Because our, our friendship, it was created because of a was, Super Bowl. It was started there. It did. And, and you haven't been to one since, man. Now, I know you had, you know, the COVID Tampa Bay Super Bowl 2020 was mm-hmm. all weird or 2021, I should say, but come on, LA and Scottsdale. Are, am I going to see you in Vegas next year, man? You've been missing out is on some fun. Vegas. Yeah. If it, if it's Vegas next year, it I, is. is it Vegas? Okay. It Cause was it, was it originally New, New Orleans and then they moved it? I don't know. New Orleans is the following year. So maybe, oh, they, did, okay. maybe they did a little okay. switch. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll have to make a, an appearance next year. You know, Super Bowl, it's always tough for me, Um, you know, and not, not really, for me anymore but the only thing that people seem to want to talk about is super bowl xl when i get on an interview <laughs> and so, well, I, I hate to say it i was going to bring it up in a couple minutes <laughs> <laughs> it is it's just hard not to come off as bitter you know uh, from you know as a sore loser from from you know my experience but um so i mean that's what like usually super bowl week you know i get requests for interviews and some podcasts and that's like what i'm revisiting and you're like no fuck off nothing this week super bowl week you go full aaron Rodgers four day darkness retreat i'm not answering any of your damn questions that sounds like what i need after after (laughs) super bowl week every every year you know i I will say because you know this i had your buddy sean alexander on the show last week and of course, brought up Super Bowl 40, brought you up, brought up Marcus Trufant. Of course, you know, just, I mean, that team, as great as a football team as that was, just the people on that team, even better. And uh, Sean and I were talking about that game. And, you know, I said the offense had been had been uh, clicking for a couple of years leading up to that game. But I, I think it was a few pieces on defense that uh, is what took Seattle over the hump and brought him to that game. I said, you know, that that rookie Tatupu, that kid, he was uh, he was really instrumental. Without him, you guys wouldn't have even been in the big game. I mean, it was, you know, timing was good, you know, <laughs> this is what I'll say from my my standpoint. Um, you know, it was an incredible team. It was one of the most fun years I ever had playing football. And, mm-hmm. you know, just coming off of a couple of championships at SC, rolling right into the Super Bowl. It's just, it was unbelievable, man. You feel like you're never, never going to lose again, right? Yeah. I mean, um, that, that's wild. That's wild to go from college championships to a Super Bowl I, right away. I think the only one that had a better string steve smith the receiver my Mm. my buddy at sc he um i think he went to three straight national titles he lost the one to texas that was his senior year right and then and then his um his rookie year i think he won it with the giants um and so i mean that's that's an incredible I right, right, right. And then he was their leading receiver in 08, which you've told yeah. me is the best Giants team that you've ever seen. The team that started they, 11 and one before Plexico shot himself. They were stacked, man. Yeah. And Eli was playing some of his best ball. It's um, it really looked like it was it was going to be a repeat that that's I mean, it was when we played them, it was just a thorough ass kicking. I mean, <laughs> I remember. I love that term, a thorough ass kicking. I love it. It was just completely just a sound performance from there, you know, and, and, you know, we, we had a rough year that year. We had a lot of guys going IR, but there's no excuses. It was, you knew you were playing the champs um, when you, when you played them and we had a bunch of battles with them the the previous three years. I think we felt felt like we played them every year and uh, just back and forth um, some violent games, but yeah, man, they, that was one of the most complete teams that I think I've ever seen. Sounds about right, man. Hey, look, you know, I will say it was my first time ever meeting, ever talking to Sean. He was amazing. He was just a great dude, as good a dude as he was a football player. Uh, but, you know, we talked about Super Bowl 40 because we talked about what's going on now with people talking about the league being scripted. And I said, if there was ever an officiating crew that treated a Super Bowl like it was scripted, it was the one that you guys had. So yeah. I, I got to ask you, watching the the ending of that Eagles-Chiefs game, it was a phenomenal game. Uh, you know, I think the team that 
was supposed to win is the team that ultimately won in Kansas City. But as someone who firsthand has his gripes about Super Bowl officiating, what did you think of that call on Bradbury at the end there? Third and eight. I mean, you know, he he handled it the right way saying, oh, well, if they called it, it was a hold, you know, because but there wasn't, you know, a full grasp in it. And the ball for as accurate as Mahomes is, that ball was very overthrown. So yeah. I don't know if Juju might have taken an extra step to sell the fake, you know, on the pivot before he turned up field. But you know, even the announcers were like, well, I didn't really see a full grasp of the jurors, like, you know, a tug just pulling him. But, um, but to, you know, Juju and his, he didn't push off or anything because it, they weren't calling. I mean, I think someone, I watched sports the other day and, and there wasn't a single hold outside of that one, um, you know, in the defensive backfield for either team. So it was just third and eight kind of like, you know, do we really need to make this kick any easier? <laughs> right. And, and unfortunately not get to see, um, you know, a chance out of Jalen Hurts. I mean, I know he got that one play, which he slipped. I know there's a lot of people out there like, oh, we we waited, you know, the windup for a 25-yard Hail Mary. Like, he slipped. Yeah. Because yeah, that no, field he, was shit. <laughs> I've heard a lot of complaints about that field, man. Yeah. Well, you got to wear, you know, you got to wear the proper footing, you know, because mm -hmm. you got to have the uh, the screw in there like, I don't know, three quarters of an inch or whatever. They're, they're long. Um, but if, if the field, when you go out there for pregame, if it's not a good surface, we always did this at Social Field. We had to make sure we go out early for pregame, check the surface, and then, you know, you don't have as many slips because a lot of guys want to wear the moldeds because they're, they're comfortable and your right. feet don't hurt the, the day after, the week after. But you have to wear the proper footing. And so, uh, you know, that that's really up to the players because the equipment staff, our guy, EK, shout out to Eric Kennedy. He always had us prepared. He always packed the screw-ins. He's like, hey, you, I don't want you switching that, that shit at halftime. Like, make sure you go out there and get a feel for the uh, the turf. Soldier Field, the worst field you ever played on? I've heard a lot of guys say that they hate it. It's either that or Notre Dame. They always grew their fucking grass so high. Like, and I think it was to like slow down Reggie Bush and it still didn't work. He still destroyed <laughs> them. But, um, but yeah, that it was like, you're playing in a, in a field out there. Like, you know, like who was it? Uh, like Russell Crowe, the gladiator walking through the fields and it's up to your waist. <laughs> right. That's why I would not expect that from South Bend. I mean, I've heard the nightmare stories about soldier field at the NFL level, but I always thought South Bend that they would keep that thing for steam. Oh, I mean, it looks gorgeous, but I mean, yeah. this shit is shit is long as hell. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Hey, you know, all of the talk last week leading up to the game was Eagles pass rush, Eagles pass rush, Eagles pass rush. It was going to be, you know, Tampa Bay against the Chiefs in the Super Bowl part two. Mahomes ran for, I believe it was like 390 something, something yards behind yeah. the line of scrimmage. And everyone was saying, you know, this Eagles defense, most sacks since the 85 Bears, it's going to be a slaughter. Chiefs didn't allow any sacks. I, I mean... You know, as a defensive player watching that, what was their O-line doing that, that was able to keep the Eagles at bay? There was a couple slips, too. There was um, yeah. some just flat out trying to turn the corner. And, you know, when you have to have proper footing when you're bending that corner um, to, to take away the surface area of your pads for the, the offensive line. But shout out to the O-line and Mahomes just getting rid of the ball. Um, you know, 21 to 27, just incredibly efficient. Probably had somebody just threw away just to, you know, avoid a sack. So they, they had a game plan. Andy Reid will always have a game plan for anything that you have, you know, prepared for him. But it was a shocking. I was talking about it in every interview I had that watch out this defense wins championships and watch out for this rush. But they did whatever they wanted, uh, even had more success running the ball than they had against any team. And this was a very tough front seven from Philly. So um, it was shout out to Andy Reid. And then even in the red zone that, those the when the yo-yo motion so when the guy comes across just setting that up and twice getting two just walk-in scores for passes that was vintage Andy Reid man yeah and two guys who those touchdown catches were their only catches of the game Kadarius Tony the four yard Sky Moore the five yard one catch but man do those count Huge. you know you, you look at those receivers that really stepped up right Tony Sky Moore guys that I mean, look, Tony was a first round pick, but compared to other receivers that Patrick Mahomes has played with, you yeah. can make an argument they're relatively no name or lesser name guys. So yeah. without Tyree Kill on this team, how important was winning this Super Bowl for Patrick Mahomes' legacy? Not just his legacy, but I think for the organization, because they invested a lot in him. And, you know, and I think, 
you know, this is where a lot of other teams, they look around, they're like, well, we need a Mahomes. Well, yeah, there's only one. So, yeah. you know, good luck. But I think you'll start to see some franchises, you know, model after them. Like, okay, we will, you know, they value the picks. Whereas we've seen other, like LA kind of, they gave away all the picks to get their Super Bowl, you know, and, and they won. So like, there's, you know, I don't have a problem with it as long as you win, right? But the all the retooling of I thought they did great by going out and getting a veteran like Juju, you know, getting a deep threat playmaker like Valdez Scantling, you know, guys that were, he was probably underutilized over in Green Bay because Adams was getting every catch, every pass. Right. So, but um, you know, they th- whoever you put out there with him is a dang is a threat, you know, and I just I couldn't believe they stopped going to Kelsey. That guy, he was on pace for you know maybe 15, 20 catches after that first quarter, first drive. Um, he's, he's to me, he's the best tight end in the game. Um, it's it's incredible what he's able to do. His ability to take a three and a five-yard check down and then get seven or eight yards consistently when there's – someone's got a kill shot, like lining up, like coming down from, from depth. Um, it's unbelievable, his spatial awareness about where – how to find the open zone. There was one time they had him – that one across the middle. Yep. Um, I mean, pressure was getting to into Mahomes' face. He still he, he lined up and he threw it. They had outside, they had him bracketed outside and um, deep, and then inside and short. And he still fit it in there. And so their chemistry is, is incredible. And that that's the one piece that they can't afford to lose if they want to continue to make these kind of runs. And and then they will because uh, that guy Mahomes playing hurt too, unbelievable. Yeah, man. I mean, look, I couldn't agree more. Travis Kelsey, and this is not a slight to Tyreek Hill, but just when you look at his chemistry with Mahomes and just how unique he is, Tyreek Hill is one of the best wide receivers in the National Football League. Travis Absolutely. Kelsey might be the best tight end of all time. He, he's getting there. He's get, I don't want to disrespect any of the greats, Tony Gonzalez, Antonio Gates, um, Witten. Gronk. Uh, I, I've played them all. Gronk. Yeah. like, But what Kelsey is able to do every game, yeah, um, even double covered. It, it's insane. You know he's coming and you can't stop him. To me, that that's yes. what makes someone the best. Is you know, you know, with Brady, you knew the, Gronk was the game plan and you couldn't stop him. The catch where he uh, where Mahomes slipped and it's at his toes. Yeah, and and like he just plucks it like that. That would be that. It was routine for him, you know, for to make those kind of catches. And that's what's crazy because a lot of other guys drop that. Even skilled receivers drop that pass because it was a poorly thrown ball. Yeah, I mean, he's just a freak. But look, when, when you were playing, you were one of the better coverage linebackers in the game. Who at the tight end position was the toughest matchup you had to go up against? You know, it it's tough to say because, you know, I was always outmatched. They're taller, they're faster, they're stronger. Um, but, you know, it was, it was like guys that you probably don't – there was a guy from Denver um, – Steven Alexander, I think was his name. And does that ring a bell? No, no. He got me not once, but twice. And and one was for a touchdown. And I'll never forget it. It was on the Zorro route where they come up. He did a great job by most receivers run at you, even receivers, because it's a, it's a they run across like a little drag, pretend to go out and then and then dart across your face. It's mm-hmm. called it's called like a Zorro. It makes like a Z. So he came up and did it. And with tight ends, I could normally take my eyes off them because they're not the fastest or quickest. They're either one or the other, right? Right. He did it. And by the time I looked back to the quarterback, because I thought I could make a play, he was already like in the end zone. And I was like, where the fuck did this guy go? <laughs> um, so, I mean, it, you know, with, with Tony Gonzalez, Witten got me uh, once. He, he had a catch. But Tony, third and 10, the game's on the line. This is 2006. And you know they're going to him. And they they spread out the formation. They isolate the middle linebacker because we were a quarters team. So you have no help. He runs up 10 yards and breaks out. And I break with him. I'm like, I'm all over it. And I was like, okay, I'm going to intercept this ball. Damon Hewitt throws it. And I barely get fingertips on it. You know, I went up, went up with two. It bounced off my hands and like goes flat. And Tony comes back a yard, sticks one hand out, and just paws it. Just boom. And just snags it. And I was like, I just lost the fucking game because I dropped the intercept. Yeah, he snags it. And uh. um, 
We we did get a stop. Dion Branch made one of the most unbelievable plays I ever seen. They, they ended up beating us, I think, 35-28. It was it was a, a shootout. But um, but you know, yeah, Tony Witten, Antonio Gates, they, every single they were all amazing. And it was it's a mismatch that I think teams need to start. Gino's done a great job up here using his tight ends. You know, we got we got a couple great tight ends. And um, you know, I think that is the biggest mismatch you can find on the field. Um these guys are generally anywhere from six five, six four to six six. They they got a great wingspan. Most of them played basketball growing up, so they know how to body position too. Antonio, so, yeah, yeah. And and these linebackers, they're actually it looks like they're getting smaller and faster to cover more ground. You know, um, so it's 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 a matchup that I've always said, hey, if you have a good tight end, that's they need to get six eight targets a game. Oh, yes. minimum, minimum. I mean, Kelsey's getting double digit. Tar- now, again, he's an exception, but he's yeah. getting double digits a game. Now, it's funny because you, you mentioned guys like Gates and Witten. And I think when people think of them, especially I'll just look at guys who you had NFC matchups with guys that you saw more often. So Jason Witten, right? He's mm-hmm. probably part of even though he was a great pass catcher, part of the older school in terms of body and build. Those are yep. great possession guy, too. big guy, great blocker. What was the matchup like and the preparation like when you'd go up against San Fran and Vernon Davis Vernon who's Dick. like built like a receiver runs like the wind uh, four four yeah I mean how do you prepare you know, for him well I mean you're luckily your decor de coordinator you know puts you in better positions because uh and you know with for in terms of routes um he he wasn't the fastest out of his breaks but when he hit straight line I remember he hit a go on a seam on me and I was I I vacated early. I left the zone early. I just yelled, I'm gone. I'm gone. Like you're not getting any help from me. Right. I, I have him to and through the, uh, the, the, the post. And he, he probably had like five yards on me and uh, you know, and I'm running full speed and he's looking back for the ball. Jeez. And so the ball was uh, slightly overthrown and I was there in time. And, and I think one of my safeties bailed me out too, just in case I wasn't there, but that was always, you know, because I had to cover like Randy Moss through through the through the slot on that. It, it's a nightmare. <laughs> but yeah. um, but yeah, Vernon when he hit the when he hit the gas, man, there were DBs that weren't catching him. I've never seen a tight end run so many go routes. I, I mean, yeah. you know, usually it's more the intermediate game, middle of the field. He was just, you know, you could put him on the outside, just let it fly. Oh yeah, and I mean, and he was burning everybody. Everybody. Yeah. Well, no linebackers running with him and no cornerbacks jumping with him. So how the hell do you, I mean. Exactly. It's just, you, you're tough. You better hope the pressure gets there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got that right, man. But Hey, look with, with this chiefs team, with Kelsey being there for, uh, you know, still some years left on his deal. Mahomes will be there his whole career. I, I mean, how many times are we going to see Kansas city in the big game? Like how many times are we going to see this on repeat people betting against them count, you know, the Eagles, all the money was on the Philadelphia Eagles and Mahomes went out there as an underdog, proved everyone wrong. I believe it was only the 10th time in his career he had been an underdog. Uh, is there a chance that this guy at just 27 years old catches Brady? Uh, catch, to catch Brady, man, I mean, he still needs five more. Yeah. I mean, you know, and that's assuming he wins all five. Right. Um, now, I think he could go to five more. The chances of winning all five are probably not in his favor. But, you know, just – even if he doesn't catch him, I mean, wait till you see the numbers this guy is going to continue to put up. Wait, and you know, we're going to talk about him. I know it's only been five years, but he's already one of the best to ever play this game. Oh, yeah. And so um, I, I wouldn't say impossible. Improbable is probably the word I use. But because, you you know, you you really you need to shore up that defense um, because this is the first time a team that put up 35 or more in both the, the championship games has lost the Super Bowl. Uh, I'm talking about the Eagles. Every other, I think there are other, other, 37 and one is the the stat I saw. If any team that won't put up 35 or more in the championship game and then put up 35 in the Super Bowl, that's the first time they lost. So, but um, if anybody could do it, it's Mahomes. And it's because just like you mentioned, without a star receiver, they could really hang their hat on saying he's getting a hundred. He's getting 10 catches in a hundred every game. You know, he spreads the ball out and just think about it. What happens if you give this guy a consistent run game and a defense? Well, I mean, the run game, it seems like they finally had, I don't know if they win that Super Bowl without Pacheco. 
it showed up in that game, but it wasn't really there all season or postseason. I mean, yeah, it, it started out rough early. Pacheco as the, I mean, seventh yeah. round draft pick, and as the year progressed, exactly. he was such a yeah. huge part. I think think about if that team still had Kareem Hunt for the last several years. Remember, because <laughs> right. he led right. the league in rushing as a third rounder, yeah. and uh, so. Um, you know, if they get the run game going to really complement what he does, uh, he he could absolutely make a, a run at at the Super Bowl record. But um, then the defense they have a lot of young pieces. They're probably going to have to move on from some players over there. Um, but you know, I think they had out of all of the the rookie classes that were to play, Seattle played a lot of rookies. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I think the Eagles were either third, second, or third in terms of how much snaps their their rookie class got. So the scary part is they're only going to get better. The Eagles or the the Chiefs? Uh, Chiefs. Chiefs. Right, right. No, I mean, yeah, McDuffie was, you know, arguably their best cornerback. Pacheco out of the backfield. I mean, yeah, Carlos. Leo Chanel is going to be a beast. Uh, And they also got young kids like Kadarius Tony's in year two, you know, first round pick from a year ago. Forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. And and Sky Moore, the other receiver, he was a rookie who who caught the other touchdown. You know, what's crazy about this Chiefs team is, and and I believe I said it uh, in in the Miami Super Bowl when you and I met Chiefs Niners. And and I said it back then, it was Mahomes' second year. And it still holds true, especially with the loss of Tyreek Hill. It's, It's the reason I value Kelsey a little more than Hill in this offense. Mahomes doesn't need all pro receivers to work with. Uh, what I said back, you know, three years ago was that he needs a track team. And if you look at his receivers this year, Valdez Scantling, one of the fastest guys in the game, Nicole Hardman, Burner, Tony, Sky Moore, guys with straight light speed, uh, straight line speed that's hard to match. He had a track team of receivers and an all-time tight end. And look what the result was. The question, the only question I have, you're absolutely right. I agree with you 100%. Um, because, yeah, if he, if he gets some more weapons, like, real consistent guys he can because he can put the ball wherever he needs to and i think right. that's the important part and that's what we're seeing you know um why they moved on for Tariq and then got a ton of picks and you know it still worked out but um is he gonna be able to use his legs the way he is for the next 10 12 years i don't know right i mean right. you kind of you kind of look at, at russ and he's been pretty much a pocket passer for the last several years um, kind of moving away from that and ex- and extending plays. He's not doing that as much. And so if, if you take that element out of his game, I don't know, like anybody, that's another threat that you don't have to worry about. I don't know how that window, if, if it's if it's open as long as, as Tom Brady, who just sat in the pocket, right? I mean, right. I think he just clips the thousand yards rushing for his career this last year in year 22 or year 21. Yeah. But when it comes to Mahomes, though, I don't even necessarily think it's his ability to to run the ball, to move the chains. It's more so to keep plays alive in, in the To pocket. get away from pressure, yeah. Right, if things break down. And, and I don't see that escaping him for, for quite a while. I mean, he still is only 27. I think he'll still be able yeah. to extend plays. I don't know if he'll be able to, to run for 50, 60 yards, but he doesn't do that a lot really in the regular he, season that we only on, see that in the playoffs from Patrick. He did, yeah, exactly. He, he did it on that bad leg, man. Cause yeah. I mean, I know uh, I play with high ankle sprains, man. Those, those are a bitch to play with, man. And, you know, for him, even just standing back there and, and that's your drive foot to push off, you know, and right. to still have the accuracy he did, you know, it, I wanted to see him get in the end zone on that long, that, that scramble. And then on the long one, he did the right thing getting down after he got about 20 something yards, but um, but yeah, man, so he's, he's so much fun to watch. And, and so is hurts, man. That kid's got a bright future too. Yeah, I mean, he's a guy who I think it's inevitable. Now, you know, anything can happen. Football's a tough game, but uh, he, he should be hoisting up a Lombardi trophy at some point in his career. I mean, what he did, it, this was the future of football, I thought. Mahomes versus Hurts in this matchup. Yeah, it looked like it could be one of these great, you know, uh, rivalries we see, you know, uh, over the years. So it's, yeah, it, it's a bright future for both of them. And uh, yeah, I just can't believe Pat, what Pat's done in five years, though. <laughs> Five straight hosting, not just making, but hosting five straight Host- conference championship games, and, three and Super if, Bowl appearances, two and one in the big game, two MVPs, and, two Super Bowl. <laughs> and if it wasn't for Brady and Burrow, he'd be in five. Oh, he'd be in goodness. five Super Bowls in his first five years. Yeah. That's insane. And, and the Brady one, not his rookie season, but his first season playing. First year starting, yeah. I mean, that was, you know, that was the overtime. You know, didn't he didn't get a chance to touch he the didn't ball. Get a chance. Yeah. I, I mean, there was no way if he got a chance to, that Pat's defense wasn't like the defense a year later. Yeah. Um, or no, I'm sorry. Was that the year uh, 
that the Patriots beat the Rams. That was the year, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that defense was phenomenal, and Mahomes was lighting mm-hmm. them up. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't think there was a shot if Mahomes got the ball that he wasn't scoring in that AFC Championship game. Yeah. It was just, just first touch wins. I mean, just like you take it back to what was it a year ago or, or whatever the Bills and the Chiefs square last off. year, and yeah, and Allen leaves them 15 seconds. It's like there's not supposed to be a prayer. There's right. not even, <laughs> and they got it. They got it. I couldn't believe it. And that, that to me is just at the end of the day, that's what separates Mahomes from Josh Allen, who I love, from Joe Burrow, who I love. It's like, I don't think there is another quarterback in the league who you can leave 13 seconds on the clock and go, oh shit, that's too much time. Yeah, as great right. as Burrow and Allen are, Mahomes is the only one. And that's why like this year, the Bills were my preseason Super Bowl pick. I was all in on Buffalo. But I said, while I'm going to say that Buffalo is the best team in the league, I will not say anyone but Mahomes is the best quarterback in the league until yeah. Mahomes shows me he's no longer the guy. Shows definitely, yeah. And then even him and Kelsey talking about chemistry, that play, you know, before the they set up the field goal, it's prevent defense, like, okay, victory, like we just kind of like the defense of like, we gotta save this. And they talked about it. There were there was a mic'd up uh episode where he was like, hey, if he's off, I'm just running straight. I'm not going to run like the corner, like, you know, like they think I'm going to run. And, yeah. he, and then Mahomes like, yeah, I'm just going to give it to you right now. And so he looked over, he, he said something, and he just turned through it 20 yards. Boom, get down. And the rest is history. But, you know, just, you know, to have the, you know, the heart, you know, to to say, hey, I know what the play is, but we're changing it. And then we're going to, it's going to work. Those two, that that was insane you know, courage by them. Yeah. The, the chemistry is nuts. The chemistry is nuts. By the way, I have to ask you before I, I want to get to a couple other things. I want to get to zone in CBD, of course, your company. Um, but before I, I just got to know any bets on the big game, did you have any action, anything on the line? Uh, I was at a casino. I think they had a sports book too, but now we, I was, I was always doing, I was uh, signing autographs, high fives and, and, and having, having a beer. So I didn't, I didn't put anything down, but there was people in there with a lot of action. They, it, was a, it was a, a Philly fan fest is what I'll say. It was, they were heavy Eagles fans in there. I was rooting for the Eagles too. You know, you seen, well, where were you? Were uh, you in, you were in Washington? I was uh, yeah. Tulela resort and casino up here in Washington. And uh, yeah, just hung out with, we did a little pregame show and uh, it's funny because the guy I highlighted, they're like, who are you going to be watching? And I said, Nick Bolton is a guy that's, you know, undersized, tough, gritty. Um, and I just love the way he plays. And he, of course, he had the big play on Scoop the fumble. And, score. and then and then he had the other one that they, they ruled not a catch. But I mean, that he would have been MVP had that had he had he, uh, that one counted. Yeah, man. My goodness. He, he had he had a ridiculous game. It was everywhere. You, you see a little bit of yourself in him? Little undersized, just got that dog in him. Nah, he's way faster. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I love the honesty. But but yeah, but the downhill, go get it, tackles for loss, smash mouth. When he gets there, he's in a bad mood. That's that's what I always look for when I'm when I'm you know watching a, a guy play linebacker, and and he he's awesome to watch, man. Yeah, it's one of those positions. You know, you said it. The tight ends are going to be bigger. They're probably going to be a little faster. You got to be meaner at that position at linebacker. You just always have to be meaner. Yeah, be nasty. All right. So the real important question from Super Bowl Sunday: the halftime show. What did you think of the halftime show? See, everybody keeps asking. I didn't even watch a single. (laughs) I saw her on the stage. She looked great. Congrats, Rihanna. Uh, She rocked the house. I know there was like 5 million extra viewers tuned in just to watch the halftime show. So, right. you right. know, that, you know, I, they, they got, I even saw the memes like, Oh, can you believe they played a football game at the Rihanna concert? Yeah. I know. So, it's always so funny. It's like, I had like my girlfriend and her friends are looking at me like I have three heads. Cause my biggest bet of the night was Mahomes over 20 rushing yards. So he's taken off. And he you know, got like, that right. He, he got, he actually got it even before the scramble. He was at oh, 24 he? and the scramble oh. solidified it. But, uh, you know, everyone's telling me you're crazy. The high ankle sprain. I bet a bottle of tequila on it with CJ 2K. Oh, and uh, I did. Said Lind- no way. I did Lindale's um, steady pick show. And, there you uh, go. We, and so um, I love those I, guys. Said, I was looking at the props and I was like, because I, I don't know who's going to win. It's going to be a close game. But um, I go, I like Kelsey eight, eight catches or more. I think he ended up with six. He had like five in the first two drives. And I, I don't know. know why they didn't keep going to him. 
I know I a lot it, of people it, had Kelsey two touchdowns and he only had the one. Well, there was also the anytime touchdown. I said he gets one. And I then, did that. Yeah. And, and then um, it said 100 yards. And I think he ended up with like 70 or 80 or something, something like that. And that was, so I was like, ah. Yeah. So, so how about this for Kelsey? He's played 14 playoff games with Mahomes as his quarterback. Scored a touchdown now in 11 of the 14 and six straight. Insane. So that anytime touchdown, it's free money. I took that. I took Mahomes over 20, uh, took the over 50 and a half, took the Chiefs money line. My only loss out of my five bets was I said the opening kickoff would be returned and it was a touchback. Ah. So I had to have some, I don't like doing the coin toss. I had to have some instant gratification. So I said, let me do the uh, opening kickoff. Opening kickoff. Yeah. That, but, that is you, Usually they run them back every time. I mean, every time. The it's, the big, it's the big game. I don't care if it's, it's, you know, three or four yards deep in that end zone. I'm taking that thing out. <laughs> right. Right. So, so you say you didn't watch the halftime show. I thought Rihanna killed it. I mean, especially people were like, Oh, she didn't dance that much. I mean, the woman's probably about five, six months pregnant Yeah. to, to perform the way that she did was incredible. Have you ever enjoyed the halftime show or is that like your yeah. collecting my, what, what's your favorite halftime show that you've I, seen? La- last year's man when they had everybody out that there the, the one in la oh that was insane. that was, insane. That that was, was the only so one good. because it was all the all the people i listened to you know growing up you know and right. so it was um it was awesome to to see that and uh yeah i know a lot of people love the halftime show i think maybe i have a little bias towards it because you know like when i was playing it's like you're drenched in sweat you know and you're now cold because you just waited for someone to do a half hour or however long show it is. And then you have to go back out and get warmed up. So I, you know, miss me with that halftime shit. Who was your, (laughs) who was yours? Was yours Prince? Was that the famous Prince? No, we had, who was Detroit? The Rolling Stones. Oh, the Rolling Stones. Probably pretty epic. Yeah. Probably pretty epic. That's one of the all timers, man. Yeah. But I mean, you know, we don't get to watch the show anyway. Right, You don't give a shit. You're trying to. (laughs) We're going over adjustments. Yeah, you're like, we've won 15 games this year, but it doesn't mean shit if we don't win this one. So yeah, exactly. that's wild. That's wild. No, I, I thought Rihanna killed it. Last year's was great. You know, it's funny. So I had gone to the actual Super Bowl each of the last two, Tampa Bay and LA. Mm-hmm. The weekend in person, I thought sounded phenomenal. Yeah. Last year, LA with Dre, Eminem, I couldn't wait for it. I thought in person, the sound quality stunk. I just maybe a month ago, not even rewatched it for the first time on uh, on YouTube. And it was, as far as TV goes, maybe the best one I've ever seen. Oh, for sure. It was insane. Yeah. I mean, and it's made for TV. It's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. But the weekend, yeah, would... the sound quality was great. But also, you know, it was COVID. The stadium was like 25% full. Maybe that had something to do with it. Mm-hmm. SoFi was packed and I was oh, in the upper deck and the sound the, stunk. The weekend's a beast though. Like, so whenever like he comes to town, the, the old lady makes me go. And oh, I, really? go, I, I go willingly. I get the tickets amazing i love it i love it hey look we've got like five minutes before this thing kicks us off the call so okay. let's get to it man zone in cbd what's new with it what's going on with it it's my favorite cbd product out there so uh here's your uh here's your plug man yeah brother um just i've been on this journey for probably like seven seven or eight years now and it's just uh with all the injuries that football has you know provided me with it's it's really given me everything i could have imagined in, in life in terms of just being in the moment hence zone in and just, um, you know, deals with the aches and pains. The biggest thing, I think stress is one of the biggest killers out there. And then, then also our coping methods or reactions to stress. So whether it's eating or, or drinking or anything, you know, it's, it's really helped me put things in perspective and uh, give me my best life. And so just help and help and spread the word and changing lives daily. And, uh, it's uh it's something I'll forever be grateful for and I'll be an advocate in the plant, you know, for the rest of my life. Uh because and I just had Brandon Iamadejo on. He just uh, you know, he's super he's a Super Bowl champ, but he's yeah. super health advocate. He's got a bunch of Orin theories. And so he joined the Take 12 podcast and we I talked about it because he inspired me to do a three day fast. So I just completed that. Holy and, like, crap. Dude, how how did that go? It was brutal, man. I, man, I had headaches and like, so that's what like the, when you get into ketosis is Mm -hmm. he was explaining the fat burning mode, your body's just kind of like, what the hell is going on? But so I had like a four, three or four hour headache. And if you could push through that though, by dinner time, that first day, the most euphoric and insane mental clarity I've ever had in my life, even more zoned in, if you can imagine that, um, 
And yeah, so I just did water, tea, or bone broth for three days. And then um, I went to bed super hungry every night. But then that that fourth day, that Thursday when I woke up, because I started on Monday, I thought I was going to be super hungry and I wasn't. I did all my podcast. I, I felt better than I ever had. And then um, I cook steak and eggs, man. And I'm telling you that first bite, I've never been so grateful for food. <laughs> And I think it's kind of really changed my my relationship with food going forward because, you know, I was afraid like coming off, I was going to be like, oh, I'm just going to eat anything and everything, pizza, anything, you know, but like I've made better choices in the last, you know, five days since coming off the fast. So um, even I weighed in at 228. I haven't been this weight since college, Jeez. since, you know, yeah. And so um, I don't know, I might be might be dunking again soon. So be on the lookout for that, man. Oh, baby. All right. Go follow him on social. What, what are your is it still just at Lofa Tatupu? I think so. I'm horrible at remembering. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's I think it's Lofa. I, I'm mostly on Instagram. I'm on Twitter, too. But, you know, that's I, I don't know. I pretty the, much the Instagram content is top notch. I, I will that's tell you pretty that. much where I, yeah, that's where I live. Pic pictures. I was a picture book guy, you know, wasn't good with words. I <laughs> stay off Twitter. <laughs> most of us ex athletes were that's, that's most of, most of us. It's relatable. That's relatable. I love it, man. And maybe Aaron Rodgers should try that instead of the four day darkness retreat or whatever the hell he's I, doing. I want to try just... that darkness retreat. That sounds amazing. That sounds like a mental breakdown waiting to happen for me. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I'm not going to knock it until I try it. So uh, I'm going go. to wait wait till he comes out with, uh, you know, his decision. And then, you know, hopefully someone asks him, Hey, well, you know, how was it? How was the, the, uh, the journey, the experience? Yeah, no, I'm definitely, I'm sure, I'm sure it'll be on a, on McAfee show or something. I'm sure we'll be hearing about it, but Perfect. my man, look, this thing says we're under a minute to go. So I might as well pick a pick right here to end it. Thanks so much, Loaf. I appreciate you joining the show, man. Always Josie. Appreciate you, brother. I'll see you all next week with episode 97 of Sorallo Sports Talk. I don't know what the hell we're going to talk about now that football's done, but we'll figure it out as we go. It's what we do with everything.